What you guys got another fix it video here for you. This one is how to fix no bootable device found. As you can see here, when you boot the system up, this one will go straight into the BIOS and it won't go to uh, the drive. You can see here, no device found, no bootable device found. And this is on a brand new computer. And this is quite a common problem, but it's quite an easy fix. And I'll show you how to do it step by step in this video. Now, it doesn't matter whether you've got a new computer or an old computer. These are the steps that you're going to take for either one of these. And it doesn't matter what make or model you're using either. So let's take a look at the first thing to check. And that is checking the system date and time. This is important because if this is wrong, the PC can start acting really weird and doing some really uh, weird stuff, just like you see here. So always make sure that that is correct. If it's not correct, then you may need to check the CMOS battery and replace it. If it's an old computer, the CMOS battery may not be holding a charge and you may need to replace that. Now you can see here when I click on these here, these little buttons, you can see it is actually recognizing the M.2 Kingston uh, drive here. So that's a good sign that it's actually seeing this in the BIOS. That's another thing to do is make sure to see whether it is actually detected. So we can see the drive. So we're going to move on to the next step. There's a couple of things you can check here. So let me move on to uh, the boot sequence here. And this is generally what happens. Now, sometimes you'll get a message coming up on the screen. But in my case, it's going straight into the BIOS screen here, like so. Now, whether you're getting some sort of other issue, if it's saying no bootable device found, then we can move on to the next stage, which is unplugging any USB devices in your computer. So whether you've got USB hubs, whether you've got some sort of a printer plugged in, external drives, unplug them and try to reboot the system and see whether that uh, works. If not, we're going to go back into the BIOS here and uh, what we're going to do is try some other things that we can do. You can reset the BIOS back to default settings and hopefully that resolves your issue. If that doesn't, we could take another look in the BIOS. There's a couple of other things we can check in here to see whether this resolves the problem. So we're going to look at uh, the boot area here. Under the boot configuration here, we're just having a little quick look through here. Now, what I'm looking for is to make sure Windows 10 feature is enabled here. It is enabled. So let me go back here. So let me just go back to the boot area. There we go. And I can also see that we've got CSM support here. Now, if you're using one of the other versions, i.e. CSM, Legacy, UEFI, one of those, try to change it over to see whether that recognizes uh, the drive. I'm going to enable CSM support here and see whether that uh, helps us get detected. So let me just enable this. It's disabled here. So let me just enable. And you can see now underneath here, we've got UEFI or other PCI devices. And also we've got storage boot uh, options control legacy. Uh, if you're on legacy, you can change it to UEFI or whatever way you want to just change it around to see whether that resolves it. Once you've done that, you can click F10 to save your settings and save these settings and reboot the system and to see whether you can actually get a splash screen from Windows and hopefully that does resolve your problem. So let's just restart here. And I know this is a, a good drive because it's brand new and you can see all of a sudden we are getting the Windows uh, logo popping up on the screen here. So I know that's a good sign. And uh, once we get to the desktop, there we go. It's booted to the desktop. So I know we have a good working uh, system here. So there was must, must be some sort of uh, setting problem that doesn't work for you, then you may want to try to reseat uh, the drive, um, unplug it. You might not have to remove the motherboard out like I've got here. This is just an example, but just try to unscrew it and basically take it out and push it back in to see whether that resolves the issue. If it's an M.2 drive, if it's a hard drive or an SSD, then you want to make sure that you check the cables, make sure they're plugged in, maybe pull them pull the cables out and plug them back in again. Just make sure they're sit seated right in there. If that doesn't work, then it's time to try reinstalling Windows to see whether that can resolve the problem for you. Uh, you might not want to do this, but you're going to have to try to reinstall it just to try and see whether uh, it's a Windows issue because it could be a Windows problem as well. So once you've reinstalled Windows, if you're still having issues, then it's time to check 
to see whether the drive is bad. And you can do that in numerous different ways. You can do it with software just to check to see whether the drive's bad or not. Now, there's many different types of devices you can use to put that drive into an external caddy so you can actually test it if it's a, a drive. I've showed you how to do that in the past, but you've got crystal disk info here, which tells you whether the smart on the drive is good here. You can see you've got good health and good temperatures. You can also use tools like Data Lifeguard, which is basically a tool which you can use to scan a drive to see whether the drive is failing. If you've got any bad sectors whatsoever, it's time to replace that drive. If the drive comes up with any sort of errors or anything like that, you can also uh, start to think about replacing the drive. Another thing you can do is do a quick surface scan of the drive. You can do this with any type of software just to see whether there's any sort of uh, red errors that are coming up here, bad blocks. These are bad sectors. I get asked all the time, how do you fix these? You don't fix them. You can mark them so they don't get read by the drive. But basically, once you start seeing bad sectors on a drive, you really want to start thinking about replacing that drive. Another thing you could do is try flashing the BIOS of the motherboard to see whether that resolves the problem as well. Bit risky, but it's worth a try. Other than that, I think that's going to be about it. Just want to say a big special thanks to all my YouTube members who join my YouTube members group. I really do appreciate your support. Thanks again for watching. My name has been Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. Bye for now.